Welcome back, my duelist friends. Casual duelist here, and it is Monday, so of course, happy Monday, my friends. But secondly, we have another Magic the Gathering deck for you. So, this one is a little more fun, I think. It focuses on the Almond Ket block, and it focuses specifically on the Green Blue Naga. Uh, so, essentially, Snake People, because Snake People are awesome. Uh, so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need 18 land. I split that evenly, 9 islands and 9 forests. Uh, this will be the start to your deck. And then uh, let's just get into... Start with the spells first, okay? Uh, normally I start with the creature spells and stuff, but let's let's build it backwards. So I play two copies of the Sandworm, Sandworm Convergence. It's a pretty costly uh, enchantment on 8. Uh, however, since these are Naga and they play similar to Elves, there will be a bit of a mana ramp here. Uh, what, the way this works is creatures with flying cannot attack you or Planeswalkers you control. Uh, so that's really cool. And at the beginning of your end step, uh, create a 5-5 five, five Green Worm creature token. So again, if you guys got some like uh, token dice or whatever, it's really good to be able to play those. Uh, but it's the only enchantment we use. We also use the Dual Spell. Spring of my, spring in mind, spring to mind, something like that. So the way that it is, it's you do this, and then aftermath, you can cast this version of it from the discard pile, and then exile the spell. So you play spring first, search your library for basic land, place it in the battlefield tapped, shuffle your library, and then mind, uh, you cast later. It's an instant. Uh, it will cast on the six here. This allows you to draw two more cards. So again, not too bad. It is a little goofy, but this is the reason I love Magic, is because you've got all sorts of split cards like this. Um, there were the and where it was like, it'd be like two pictures of two cards side by sided, and uh, you got to choose which one to play. It was kind of fun, and uh, I really like that they brought that in cycling back for Almond Cat. Uh, so that was fun. Um, we're going to use three copies of Shed Weakness. This is going to be a uh, instant on one. Target creature gets plus 2-2 two, two until end of turn. And you may remove a minus 1-1 one, one counter from it. Uh, so depending on what you and your friends are playing, um, this is going to be very, very helpful. Um, just in the fact that you can get rid of the counters. Um, and one of the decks that I ran into the most with that was my one friend's. Uh, it was block format similar to this. Uh, but he played the return to Mirrodin, like Mirrodin Besieged and stuff. And uh, once you got to like New Phyraxia, you really had Infection come back to the game. So that was pretty fun. Um, and then I also play four copies of Synchronized Strike. So on three, this will allow you to untap up to two target creatures and give them both plus two, two until the end of the turn. So again, uh, you, you throw some attackers your opponent's way and they think they're safe. And then it turns out you're going to be able to block with them because you untapped them. It's fun. It's fantastic. It's everything it should be. Next, you guys may notice uh, I play this card a lot in all of her forms. I just love Nisa because I love elves. Um, the way that the Steward of Elements Planeswalker card is, is we're going to pay uh, green, one blue, and then X, um, which is going to come down into the effects here. So the, the X is going to be how many devotion counters you give. Uh, so you could pay it on one. You could play her very early game, get her out for three mana, and then she'll start with a one, and then you start building your effects from there. Or if it's mid to late game, she could come out with, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, loyalty, depending on what type of mana you have to spare. Uh, the effects, plus two loyalty, gives you a scry two. Uh, zero, no, no, uh, Edits either way. Look at the top card of the deck. If it's land or a creature with a converted mana, less than or equal to the number of loyalty counters currently on Nisa, you may place that card to the battlefield. And for a negative six, untap up to two target lands you control. They become five, five elemental creatures with flying and haste until the end of the turn. They still count as lands. So again, doing her elementalist things, she's awesome. Let's get to the creature spells, right? So the first one I play is the Honored Hydras. I love these guys. They have Trample. They are 6-6s six on 6. They have the effect of Embalm. So the way Embalm works is for the Embalm cost, exile this card from the graveyard, create a token that's a copy of the card, except now it's a white zombie. 
Snake Hydra with zero mana cost. And you may only use the Embalm effect as though it were a sorcery. So no playing it in as like a flash or anything. Um, next up, I'm going to get into some of our Naga, which I was a little upset that they were labeled as Naga and they didn't get Snake, only because I would have loved to have uh, mixed them with, I want to call them the Orochi from Kamigawa. Uh, but we were on a want to run three copies of Hooded Brawler. It's a 3-2 three, on 3. You may exert this card as it attacks, and if you do, it gets an additional 2-2 two, two until the end of the turn. And it does have the reminder text here for us. An exerted creature will not untap during the next untap phase. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! players, think Goblin Attack Force. Okay? Um, otherwise, Magic players, they know, they know what they're doing. Next three of, we're going to play Oracles of the Naga. This is going to cast on four. It's going to give you a 2-4. When this one enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. Any number of them to the graveyard. The rest back to the library and in an order that you choose. So it's sort of like scrying, but not exactly. But again, this will allow us to do things like Embalm, because we can throw the Hydra away, Embalm it as a uh, four cost instead of a five cost. So depending on how you want to play your turn, uh, things like that are going to really help. We are going to run four copies of the Naga Vitalist. This one, two casts on two. And when tapped for its ability, adds one mana of your uh, of a color that one of your lands can produce. Since we're playing vanilla lands, uh, islands and forests, she can go ahead and create either uh, blue or green mana for you. So very good. And part of the mana ramp I mentioned. Additionally, two copies of Oasis Ritualist. Uh, this one is a 2-4 for four, 4. Tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Or tap, exert, add two of any one color to your mana pool. And again, exerted monsters will not untap the next time they would normally. So they stay tapped one turn longer. But you get a better benefit now, which is the whole point. Next up, we're going to play four copies of the Slither Blade. This card is just uh, an unblockable. This one cannot be blocked. And uh, it's a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. And I do like the fact that they didn't give it something like Island Walk or anything. Um, just because like land walk abilities are a little obscure at this point, unless you're an actual you know spell slinger for MTG, chances are you don't know those words, and it gets a little weird. Uh, but it is nice that it can't be blocked, so you can get some hits off. Our third, our, our next card, it will be the Taw Crop Skirmisher. We're gonna run three copies. It's a two one on two with Embalm for four. And again, you can create a token copy of it that's a white zombie Naga warrior with no mana cost. So we can go ahead and we can play this in the early game. We'll get this back later game. Since it's coming back in the later game, it's going to cost a little more. Next, we're going to play one copy of Vizier of the Menagerie. This is a Naga Cleric. It's going to be a 3-4 four on 4. You may look at the top card of your library. You may do this at any time. For those of you that saw the Yu-Gi-Oh deck yesterday... It's very much like the skill card aroma strategy, which is still sitting on the table. Don't worry about that. Um, then you may cast the top card of your library if it is a creature card. And you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type in order to cast creature spells. So in decks where you add three to five colors of mana, uh, this guy sees even more play. Uh, but it's pretty basic for our deck since we're only running the blue and the green. Next up, we're going to run three copies of the Watchful Naga. Uh, this is going to be a Naga Wizard. It's going to be 2-2 two, two for 3. You may exert it as it attacks. When you do this, you get to draw a card. So again, nice little bonus. Um, and then there's our last card. It's going to be one of those multi-casts. Uh, we're going to run three copies Weaver of Currents. So it's going to cast on three. Uh, it's going to be 2-2, two, two, and it will add two colorless to the mana pool when tapped. Uh, this symbol came out, I want to say it was during the Return to Zendikar, um, when it was the Eldrazi, if I'm not too mistaken. Um, then we were given an actual symbol for colorless, as opposed to them just saying, okay, cool, it's it's add to colorless. Um, and again, for those Yu-Gi-Oh players out there, like when you end up with this kind of background, um, we deal with uh, attributes for our cards, they deal with color identities uh, as far as what the spell counts as. So this one counts as multicolored spell, both blue and green. So it's pretty cool. 
But that is my 60 card Naga deck built from the Almond Cat block. Um, it's, it's loads of fun. Um, in the deck box, I had some extra extra copies of stuff. So I had like an extra Hooded Brawler, an extra Naga Oracle. Basically everything that was like at three, the fourths are in here. And then like I always keep like up to 10 land uh, per color when it's split identity with it. Um, I'm not big on card sharing. When it comes to my other games, uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh! I do it uh, almost out of necessity because, like, in this game, we, we have, like, a whole shift-out mechanic. So, like, these these cards were good during their set, the next set, and I think after that, they end up dropping off. And by set, I mean block. Uh, so it's actually, by this point, I want to say it was two sets equal one block um, to finish up the storyline. Um, so you do rotate cards out and since like basic land cards are always so easy to get a hold of, I just never really like had to card share. So, uh, games like Yu-Gi-Oh where cards sort of sit on a ban list for a couple of years at a time and then come back, it's a lot easier to rationalize just collecting, you know, whatever the play set is. But, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you have. If you did consider supporting the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, all the normal things if you don't mind. Uh, but again, only if we've earned it. But more importantly, my friends, I'd like to ask you guys to go out there. Do a little something for yourself tonight because your mental health is worth it. And uh, I try to say it. I try to say it all the time. Go out there. Take care of yourself. Make sure that you at least put aside some time every day for you. And uh, I don't know what kind of battles you guys are going through. I'm just hoping that I'm here to give you guys a bit of a smile. And a little bit of encouragement at the end of these videos, okay? So go out, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, we should have some more stuff. Again, tomorrow's August, so we'll have a whole new month. We'll be that much closer to the Speed Duel, uh, Streets of Battle City. Um, I've already got a tryout ready for tomorrow, which should be fun. And uh, guys, just enjoy yourselves, all right? Hope to see you guys next time. Later.